All right, welcome to part number seven from chapter 11. And this episode, you can argue, is by far the most important episode of this series. Because we're going to talk about the vocabulary of Mendelian genetics. And you have to know exactly what all these vocabulary words mean if you want to be able to do genetic problems correctly. So make sure you bookmark this episode so that you can watch it once or twice before you have your tests and quizzes. Because without knowing this stuff, you're going to have a hard time understanding what goes on in basic or Mendelian genetics. So let's get down to business. Okay, what is a trait? A trait is a characteristic of an organism. And it can be um, a chemical trait. Uh, so in other words, maybe this uh, organism has antibiotic resistance. It's able to defeat uh, a chemical. For example, you find that in bacteria. Or it can also be an, an outward or a physical characteristic, like hair color, eye color, etc. Okay? Now, all traits are determined by a gene. And remember, one gene equals one protein. Remember that rhyme we've had before? And so the gene is the directions for making that coat. So in the case of bacteria who are antibiotic resistant, they can produce a protein that can either uh, destroy whatever kind of antibiotic it is or keep the antibiotic from getting inside the cell or whatever. Okay, and then for example, like in Mendel's peas where you have purple, uh, purple flowers, then you have a gene that produces a protein that we perceive as purple. Okay, now this concept allele is real important. By definition, it's an alternative uh, form of the gene. So if you remember, you see this letter A, think of alternative form. And really what that means is there's a gene for a certain trait, but that trait may come in two different types. All right. So best examples right down here. We have height in pea plants. Okay, so the trait is height. There's a gene for height, but that gene comes in two forms, a tall form and a short form. So you have a tall allele and you have a short allele. There's two forms for height. Now, pay attention to this stuff down here. Alleles come in pairs. We come in pairs because most organisms are diploid. In other words, they got one allele or one gene from dad, and they got one allele or another gene from mom. So they came in pairs. They have two. And that's because they're a diploid. And you remember, you get diploid from sexual reproduction. Okay, so without sexual reproduction, you know, none of the stuff is either going to is going to make any sense to us. Okay, so remember, a trait is a characteristic. A gene codes for that trait. Genes can come in different forms for a particular trait. Those forms of that gene are called alleles. For example, a tall allele and a short allele. All right, All right. homozygous and heterozygous. These are two very important terms that you need to know. The zygous part kind of refers to the alleles, the genes that you have, okay? So homozygous simply means the same, all right? So both parents contribute the same allele. So an individual who's homozygous, they would have got a tall allele from mom and a tall allele from dad or a short allele from both parents. Heterozygous, remember hetero means different. So in this case, the parents contributed different alleles. One parent gave the tall allele, the other parent gave the short allele. So this individual is heterozygous. Okay. Now what does the word dominant mean? And this comes from Mendel's principle of dominance. Okay. This is an allele that will always be expressed. Now expressed means you're going to go through, whoops, let me spell that correctly. You're going to go through transcription. And translation. So, in other words, this protein that causes that trait is going to be produced. Okay. Now, Mendel called this the principle of dominance. This one allele will be expressed no matter what is the other allele. So, an individual who has two tall alleles, which happens to be the dominant allele for height, they're definitely going to be tall. But look at the heterozygous individual. This dominant allele right here, the tall, is going to be expressed. It doesn't matter what the other allele is. So even though this individual has a short allele in its genotype, we're going to get to what genotype means here in just a little bit. Tall is dominant. So in other words, the tall gene is going to be expressed. 
Okay, now recessive basically means it's only going to be expressed if it's homozygous. So the only way the short allele or the recessive allele is going to show up in a pea plant is it had to get a short allele from mom and a short allele from dad. In other words, it's homozygous. It's the same. So you'll notice here you have two of these. That's the same. And in other words, homozygous. So once again, let's review. Homozygous means both alleles are the same. And remember, alleles come in pairs because you got one from mommy and you got one from daddy. Heterozygous means different. Like you got a tall allele from one parent and you got the short allele from another parent. So you have different alleles. Dominant means this allele will be expressed no matter what. And recessive can only be expressed if they're the same. Like you got this allele from dad and you got that allele from mom. Okay, let's move on to the next one. All right, genotype. Genotype basically just refers to, and if you look at the word, it's kind of telling you what it has. Okay, think of, it's just the type of genes you have. Let me get caught up here. There we go. Okay, just the type of genes you have. Uh, book definition would be the actual alleles that the individual has. Now, when we're talking about genotype, remember what we had on the last slide? Things like heterozygous, homozygous, dominant, recessive. Those are genotype words. Those are words that are describing the genotype of an individual. So if I would say somebody was homozygous dominant, that would mean they'd have two big T's. Okay. If I said somebody was heterozygous, I've just described their genotype, big T, small t in this case. And if you're homozygous recessive, you're going to be two small T's. Now, if you use the word homozygous, you have to tell somebody if it's homozygous dominant or if it's homozygous recessive. If it's heterozygous, you can simply just say heterozygous. You do not have to say heterozygous dominant because that's just redundant. Because when you say heterozygous, you've already told the person that's a one big letter and one small letter. Okay, so make sure you remember that part. When you use the word homozygous, you've got to use the word dominant or recessive after it. Okay, phenotype, the book definition is the physical expression of the genotype. Just think of this, pH pH, phenotype, physical. What it means in plain English is right here. It's what you look like. What proteins are you making? All right. So for example, if I was to describe the phenotype of this gentleman, that would be tall. Okay. So this is the genotype. That is the phenotype. All right. True breeding or purebred is something that you're going to come across also. And you're also going to come across the word hybrid. All right, so what do these guys mean? Well, purebred means it's always going to breed pure to its trait. So in other words, if it was a tall plant, it would always pass along the tall trait. If it had a purple flower, it would always pass along the purple flower trait. Okay. Now, what we want to remember is that when you see the word true breeding or purebred, you want to remember that that simply means that individual is homozygous. It's all of its gametes are going to have the exact same allele. Okay. So let's say this individual here is the dad. All of his sperm cells are going to have a big T because that's all he can get. He only has big T's. Okay. Hybrid means that you're a mixture. And we want to think of the word hybrid. We want to think of the word heterozygous. In other words, their alleles are different. Okay. You get hybrids from two different purebreds. So in other words, if dad was a purebred tall, and we're going to cross it with a mother who was purebred short pea plant, all of their babies would get a big T from dad and a little T from mom, and that would make them a hybrid. They're a mixture. Okay. Now, this sentence right in here, between the two X's, this person's gametes are either going to get a big T or a small T. So they're going to be a hybrid. You know, they're going to be different. Their, their alleles are going to be different, and they can give different alleles to their offspring. Okay, Very important concept. Make sure you know the difference between purebred. Purebreds, homozygous, heterozygous is a hybrid. Oops, there we go, wrong button.
All right, so putting it all together, I believe this is our last slide in, in this episode, okay? So if we remember, we just learned about stuff like homozygous, heterozygous, trait, allele, dominant, recessive, genotype, phenotypes. Let's put those all together here with the pea plant trait of height, okay? So remember, height is a trait. Traits are determined by a gene. Now, in this case, the gene has two alleles. Remember, an allele is an alternative form of a gene. There is a tall allele, which happens to be dominant. So tall here is the dominant allele. And then short would be the recessive allele. Now, remember, recessive can only be expressed if it's homozygous. Now, the genotypes. Remember, genotypes, you can, you can write down genotype in two different ways. You can use the letters or you can use the big fancy words. I'm a big fan of the big fancy words because it makes you sound smarter. But both will work. Okay, so the genotypes that are possible for pea plants would be big T, big T, big T, little t, little t, little t. Now, you just can't say T, 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 T because I don't know what kind of T's you're talking about. So you need to say big T or little t. So two big T's, homozygous dominant. Heterozygous, big T, little t. Remember, you do not have to say heterozygous dominant. That would be redundant. And then homozygous recessive, two little t's. So this is genotype stuff right over here. Now, the phenotype is determined by the genotype. So let's remember this. Genotype determines the phenotype. You make sure you write this down. That's an important concept. Your genes determine what you look like. Duh. All right? Now, if you're homozygous dominant, in other words, two big T's, you're going to be tall. If you're heterozygous, you're going to be tall because the tall allele shows the principle of dominance. And the only way that you can be short is you have to be homozygous recessive. Now, remember... The homozygous individuals, those are true breeding or purebreds because they're going to breed true to that trait. And any heterozygous individual, they're called a hybrid. Okay. I would strongly suggest that you watch this episode over again once or twice to make sure that you understand what all these vocabulary words mean because they are essential for you to solve uh, genetic problems. Okay. So until the next time, we're going to catch you on the flip side.